The olive tree has a long and storied history. Appearing in the book of Genesis, it's actually one of the first plants mentioned in the Bible. Noah, unsure if the flood was over, was finally assured when a dove delivered him an olive branch as proof that the world was no longer covered in water. Plucking one of the small fruits from the plant, Noah turned to a pair of giraffes and asked, You tried that? Here we are, it's You Tried That, and I love that theme song, that opening theme song, which I just heard. (laughs) (laughs) Now you heard it again, it's like you just heard it. (laughs) We just recreated it. All right, so I'm Nick Novak, and I'm here with my buddies, Chad Hancock. How's it going? And Nick Agger. Hello. How you doing, boys? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Good. Got a pretty full stomach here, so might as well eat some snacks. (laughs) (laughs) What what better time? Yep. You know what, I I had a discussion earlier in the week uh, with my wife about this, about the difference between jam and jelly, but it got me thinking, what do you guys do with a freshly toasted piece of toast? How do you cover that toast? Hmm. I have a couple different options here. Depends on my mood. Sometimes, but always douse it in butter. First things first. Just absolutely slather that thing in butter from edge to edge. Then from there, we either, sometimes I'll take like a cinnamon sugar mixture. You know, you can buy the cinnamon sugar from the spice rack and just douche it all over that thing so that it just like (laughs) sort of soaks in. (laughs) This is how you eat jelly? Well, he said just toast in general. The way you're describing it, your hands are like flying back and forth, like slather it and douche it. This is a sexual description of what you're doing. Then as far as, so that's one option. I do love, you know, toast with jam. I will go with strawberry jam. My favorite brand is St. Dalfour. So if you ever see that on the shelves, got to buy that. Yeah, and sometimes just some some good old honey, butter and honey on there is pretty good too. You got a wide variety of toasting <laughs> options, dude. I love me some toast. How often are you eating toast? Uh, actually, quite a bit. I eat a lot of toast. <laughs> what kind of bread then? So we buy the Aura Wheat Country White bread. So Aura Wheat's the brand, and Country White is the flavor. And so that that one's good because the pieces are maybe one and a half times the size of like if you bought like a Wonder Bread loaf or something like that. So I'll eat two pieces of that, and it's the equivalent of eating, like, three pieces of regular bread, so I get extra fat. It's fantastic. And then you cover it with butter edge to edge? (laughs) (laughs) Great. And it's this whole thing, because, like, you know, we keep our butter in the fridge, but, like, putting, you know, cold butter, (laughs) spreading it is not spreadable. So if I'm going to have toast, I need to plan it out ahead of time. i got to take the butter out of the fridge, like, the night before, so that it returns to room temperature. It's a whole production, but it's worth it. Geiger, you... Use baobab on your toast, right? Uh, baobab exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> and I washed it down we with a we are, ice. We weren't going <laughs> to carry over jokes <laughs> from episode to episode, but baobab yeah. was too good not to. Yeah, no. Yeah, whatever, brah. I plan about five minutes in advance. See what I do. Here's my recipe, Chad. I don't know. I'll swap recipes. I go in my fridge, right? Yeah. I select a single piece. Hold on. Let me get a piece of paper. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'll write it down. Write it down. Single piece, a regular fucking bread that you buy at a regular fucking store. Bread in your fridge? Yes. Yeah, me too. Did you really? It's a oh, pressure. Yeah. I did not do that. Man, so many toast options here. Then I push it in the, uh, put it in the slot, push down the wire till they get all hot, and then I go, <laughs> yeah, toast. Probably. You're describing how you toast bread. Yes, and then I'll take it out and I'll put peanut butter on it and I'll eat it. Sands the two or three bites that my children insist on having every time I make it. I literally exclusively eat peanut butter toast. Now, if I'm out at breakfast, they don't often have peanut butter for you to put on your toast, so I will eat buttered toast. In fact, if they offer pancakes or toast, I always take toast, just regular white toast with butter. And that's how you do that. So, yeah, <laughs> just regular toast. That's most and people that is toast. how it's done. Right. I don't know this four-hour prep time you need to make fucking toast. 
Well, okay, but if I if I don't have enough prep time, I'll get the the butter out. But then I have to stop the toaster halfway through. I so I have a toaster oven, so you put the toast in horizontally. I'll I'll I'll, I'll stop the toaster halfway through, take it out, put some butter on it, then put it back in so that the butter melts in the toaster. So that will work too. Yeah, that sounds much less insane. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot for a piece of toast. Yeah, it really is. What do you do, Novak? I. Toast the bread. <laughs> I'm probably, I'd say 60% of the time, just straight butter. I like my toast on the lighter side as opposed to the browner side. Me too. And then the other 40% of the time, I am grape jam, not jelly. I feel like I, I've noticed a huge difference between jam and jelly. Mm-hmm. I prefer jam in almost everything. Jam on my peanut butter i guess and jam sandwich yep and jam's the way to go and so that's really probably the only two things i think peanut butter on toast sounds pretty good i could eat that it is good i Um, grew up eating it every day that's all i ate but i'm not a cinnamon guy at all i like almost nothing that's cinnamon so i would definitely pass on chad's uh, piece of toast also because we're in san francisco we will do avocado toast a lot lately where you just scoop out an avocado smash it up put in some olive oil and salt and then put that on toast that's fantastic too that sounds decent yeah Yeah. you know when you were making fun in a previous episode of someone for being a hippie (laughs) i would say an hour and a half toast prep is hippie (laughs) i also don't like cinnamon as a flavor at all like cinnamon candy cinnamon allergic to it no, I'm not allergic to it. I also did the cinnamon challenge one time. I don't know if you remember that from back in the day. Sure. Eating a spoon of cinnamon? Yes, because I was picturing in my head cinnamon sugar, because that's what we always ate on our toast growing up. And uh, for those of you not done the cinnamon challenge, do not do it. It is awful. It's a teaspoon, which I thought was a lot smaller in my head, and it's just like pure bitter dust. You put it in your mouth, and it sucks the moisture out of your mouth entirely. I did it at my boss's house. What? I was thinking when you were a kid or something. Yeah, that sounds like a fantastic work outing. This was like 10 years old, uh, 10 years ago. Do the cinnamon challenge or you're fired. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was, I went to my boss's house and someone brought it up. I I can't wait to hear this story. How did this come up at a work party? We were over there, right? And then I was like, had to do something to impress the boss. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, he's like, put down my cinnamon. And he said, no. (laughs) I ate all of his cayenne powder. No. uh, so someone had brought up the cinnamon challenge because it was making the rounds. And I was, and I, in my head, I was like, it's no big deal. What's the big deal? And all of a sudden it was like a, oh, Geiger thinks it's no big deal. And I'm like, oh, shit, now i got to do it. So I almost spit up in her sink, but I didn't throw up, but I was gagging because it made my, all the way back to like the back of my throat was just dry. I was grabbing for a glass of water. I could not breathe. I coughed a couple times and just brown puffs came out of cinnamon. And what was the what? great part about it? What other things were you peer pressured to do at this party? Because it sounds like you're the only one that did it. Like, everybody else is just like, Geiger's an idiot. <laughs> Does more than one person have to be at a party? Because I had just broken into their house and ate their cinnamon. No, uh, no I fucked a bunch of people. No. <laughs> That's what they were pressuring you to do? Yeah. A no, bunch? Sex with everyone. No. <laughs> and I was like, fine, geez. <laughs> All for a two thousand dollar promotion. No, uh, <laughs> so I ate it. I started spinning up, and the worst part, the well, worst slash funniest was that is the first time I met her husband, my boss's husband, who wound up being my new boss at my current company. And when we first started talking to him, she helped me connect with him to get the job. We were, she, she put him on speakerphone in her office, and she's like, "Yeah, Nick Geiger's interested in that job that you have. Uh, I know you were t- t- telling me that you'd be willing to talk to him." He's going, "Who?" And she goes. That guy who had cinnamon in our house. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts calling cinnamon over the phone, and finally I'm like, you're making me sound like a stripper. Would you just call me Nick? <laughs> hey, cinnamon, like, at work. And then he'd call me cinnamon at work, and I'd have to explain the story at my new job. Like, hey, I'm the new guy. I ate a teaspoon of cinnamon. They also made you put Tide Pods on your toast, didn't they? Yeah, uh, Tide Pods. Well, but first I had to prep the Tide Pods the night before. Then I put them in a toaster oven, take them half out. <laughs> Uh, they told me I need to be a clean eater. Get it? Okay, you're fired again. I thought it is. <laughs> <laughs> did, ever, did any of you guys ever do any of those challenges? Like there was a milk one where you can't drink a gallon of milk at once or something, or there's a salty cracker one or something? I actually want to do the milk challenge someday because I drink so much milk, and I actually have 
come close where I've drank, but I didn't do it in one sitting. I, I've definitely drank over a half of a gallon of milk in a single day, and that's kind of sad, but also delicious. So I think I would like to see how far I could get in the in the milk challenge. I know that like the stomach is not big enough, and at some point like you do throw up, but I just want to see how far I can get. I know I'm going to throw up. I just want to do it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but I never had any desire to do cinnamon challenge or any of that other stuff because I've seen the YouTube videos and I'm like, nope. I've never done that. What are some other ones? I'm trying to think. Well, there's the only weird, two I can think of. There's some weird drinking ones. Like, I know, like, it's a new thing for kids to take shots of vodka and stuff in their eye. Like, they pour it in their eye because you'll absorb the alcohol faster. There is butt chugging, in which you put, a, like, a beer bong up your butt and pour the alcohol in there because you'll absorb the beer faster or the, the alcohol faster. I wouldn't say it's a challenge, necessarily. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a little bit different than a teaspoon of cinnamon. <laughs> this sounds uh, more like one of your work parties. <laughs> well, I found out about it at a work party. It was one of the funniest moments of my life. This guy walked up to me, hammered, wearing a sombrero, and was just like, you know what the kids are doing? They're butt chugging! And he yelled at my face, <laughs> and I almost passed out laughing. I was like, uh, what? Okay, <laughs> real quick, back to toast. Before <laughs> we jump into the snacks, just real quick toast ranking from everybody. Bagel, English muffin, regular toast, rank them. I'd say... Straight toast is first. There's a reason that it's called toast without any other qualifiers. It is the top. English muffin, two. I like bagels a lot, but I specifically dislike toasted bagels. Mm. For whatever reason, I prefer my bagel on toasted. <laughs> Actually, to the point where recently my wife picked up a bagel for me. I always get the same thing, and I say, remember to say untoasted. Tell them not to toast this. And <laughs> it's not it's from like a local deli, like a uh a Jewish owned deli by us, and the bagels are really good. But then I pulled it out, it was warm and toasted, <laughs> and I threw the bagel down at the table. <laughs> she said, What's wrong with you? <laughs> like I just was looking forward to that regular bagel. I didn't want it toasted, so that's for sure third of that list to me. All right, Geiger. Are we presuming, just for comparison's sake, like the plain version of each? Sure. Okay. I would probably go toast first, bagel second, English muffin third. I eat a lot of English muffins because they have them at work. I also eat a lot of bagels because they have them at work. I like, there are certain bagels I like better than toast. So like a sesame seed bagel is my favorite. I would probably have that if it was available over plain toast. But just if we're just comparing the plain versions, toast is best. All right. I go English muffin, number one, easy. Love English muffin. Whoa! Oh. I will always get that. Like, if that's an option at brunch or whatever, they say, what kind of bread do you want? It's always, do you have English muffin? Give me that. Second, I'm actually going to go bagel second. I think bagel's great. And then third, toast. Still love them. You can't go wrong with any of them, but that's my order. I also try to avoid saying bagel because I've been told my whole life I say it wrong. You do. You say bagel. School. What am I saying wrong? You say bagel. Uh -huh. Like B-E-G-E-L. It sounds like bagel is that how I'm yeah is that better? that's better i would say hey, second our old episode i felt like you said jalapeno wrong too it's not jalapeno <laughs> say how say the way you would normally say it jalapeno what maybe that's right maybe I missed it. what's yeah. wrong how, uh, so, did i say jalapeno before yes I think you, it was say Re you say reese's cups which is not how you say it yeah i probably <laughs> reese's there's no e in there well there is e's in there two of them Let's criticize each other's talking for the next 20 minutes. I talk good, damn it. None of you assholes slip up for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> All right. We've got snacks. Stacks of snacks here. <laughs> All right. We've got snacks. Yeah. No. <laughs> I then had to change it to stacks of snacks. We've got stacks of snacks to rate. And the first one, we're going to say, dang, coconut chips. And this is a... I've made that joke so many times in my head since I picked these up. I actually read, went and read the story on this. It's a pretty new company, this dang company. Some guy who came up with this idea for this company, cooking with his mom in the kitchen. Dang. Dang, that's right. Yeah, the back says dang's OG, so they're definitely trying to be hip. Assuming there are a number of different dang chips, uh, this one is the coconut-flavored chip. How are you guys on just coconut-flavored things in general? Actually, they, uh, I have seen other dang. They are all coconut chips, but then they just have different okay. like, seasonings or whatever. 
All right. But yeah, to your original question, I don't like coconut in general. Coconut flavored things, it's, it's not a problem actually. The flavor's okay. I have a problem with the consistency of coconut. Like there's something weirdly chewy about it that just doesn't feel pleasant when I eat it. So actually don't hate the flavor. Like I'll drink coconut milk. Anyways, yeah, so that's my thoughts on coconut. Geiger? Not a huge fan. I do like coconut, like Almond Joy and Mounds are good, but I'm with you. It's a little strange. It's not my favorite flavor. I do find it funny on the ingredients. It'll say, it says contains tree nuts, and then from then it goes, coconuts. <laughs> you know, like, we told you right in there. It's your fucking coconut. <laughs> yeah, the ingre- there's, there's not that many ingredients. Coconut, sugar, and salt, and then below that it says contains coconuts. <laughs> But right underneath that, it says one serving of raw apple. So I'm, I'm confused. Where Does anyone know where that asterisk comes from? Because I don't know why there'd be apple in this. Oh, I'm reading that. Uh, because you're allergic to apple now. I'm a little concerned, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, How about you, know, Mac? Do you like coconuts? I do not like things like Mounds Bars or uh, yeah. like Snowballs, like coconut-based things. I don't mind the drink, like a coconut water or something like that. It's not great, but... I actually really love the smell of coconut, so I, I'm enjoying smelling these. These but... have a strong coconut smell. Yeah, they smell good. Right, and I could smell them all day long, but um, I'm really a normally not a fan of the taste. So let's let's dig in here. You can see on the front of the bag that you, you just crack open a coconut and these chips come flying out. <laughs> They're like shaped like Fritos, kind of. These are a lot harder than I expected. Oh, yeah, they are crispier than I thought. Yeah, they're... Uh... But not not they are shaped like a Frito, but smaller and not quite crispy like a Frito. It's I'm trying to think about how you would describe this. It also isn't something you would dump chili on top of, like you would ch- uh, Fritos. It almost yeah. I mean, it just looks like a big like we're used to seeing coconut shredded coconut. Yeah, it looks like you just giant size those pieces. It's like crispy up. like dried fruit, only not quite as chewy. This one uh, yeah, it just says made from sliced toasted coconuts. And I don't know. I, I have never seen these on the shelf. Sugar and salt, which is interesting. I don't taste any of the salt. I taste almost all the sugar. They're, yes. Yeah, they're, they're sweeter than I expected. Yeah, they're pretty pretty sweet flavored. Yes. Mm. They're interesting. I mean, the flavor's pretty good, but as I bite into it, I do get that. Like, the more I put in my mouth, I get that coconut consistency starting to build up, which mm-hmm. is starting to annoy the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> the, the more <laughs> I eat, the less I want yeah. to eat these. Yep. Agreed. They're... You could put them under your lip like Big League Chew, right? I think, yeah, that's what most of MLB <laughs> has gone to. Right. Their tobacco replacement. All right. So, is um, this a chip either? I don't, I mean, I guess anything in a, like a hard piece of something could be a chip. It just, this is not what I think of. When I, think I don't of think chips. if they branded them as coconut flakes, then they would like sell as well, right? Right. We're going to uh, start with Hancock today. So give us our first rating here on the dang coconut chips. Sure. Well, Dang, these, <laughs> the, it, yeah, it's exactly like you said, like I start, they started off great. The first couple bites, I was really pleasantly surprised. I'm like, oh, I like these a lot more than I thought. But then the more I ate, the flavor kind of started to grate on me, I guess. And then the consistency just doesn't really do it for me. If I had only eaten one chip, I probably would have given it a mild like that. But since I ate, you know, maybe seven, eight, something like that, I'm actually going to go dislike that. Uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna slide in here next because you took the words right out of my mouth. That's almost exactly what I would say, that if I stopped right away, I would have given this a decent rating. And I was actually a little surprised and prepared to like it. And then I kept going. And that was a big mistake because... <laughs> the last mistake you'll ever make. <laughs> Dang. I, I'm sort of remembering why I'm not a big coconut fan. The taste is just not that appealing to me. So I am also going to drop it down to a dislike. So we've got a double dislike debt. And <laughs> Geiger, just a look on his face is of surprise, so I'm waiting to see what he's got for us. He's still eating them. So, Novak, would you say... That means our... nothing. <laughs> <laughs> on our sister podcast, you smelled that? You would give these a uh, good rating, crack. Oh, I love that smell. Mm-hmm. As a guy who never stops after just one chip, <laughs> I can tell you, I was prepared to not like these, and I actually think that I really do enjoy them. Um, I'm surprised that I like them. I kept eating them. They are a little too sweet. Like, to me, 
again, when if I'm looking for a snack, I'm more of a salty person. So in terms of flavor profile, I'm just salty as shit. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know where. I, just, I don't I know like why. When people, are, when people have a salty personality, they're described as salty as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that salty guy. He is salty AF. As the kids would say. <laughs> what do you think about Geiger? I think he's salty as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I so you know what I you, I like them more than I thought. They're healthy. I think they're tasty. I, they're a little like too. I can't eat this whole bag because they're just too sweet all at once. But I would eat them as a snack. I, having said that, that bag's empty. I <laughs> ate most of the bag. But <laughs> there is a small layer of dang chips on the bottom. I would give this a like that actually. Surprisingly. Whoa. Dang. Yeah. Speaking so that's uh, two dislikes and a like. So kind of a middle of the road start here for the dang chips. And Yay. we're gonna we're gonna slide right over to something else that potentially is not all that bad for you, which is these olives. And I believe it's O Loves is the name of the company. Natural green pitted olives, a chili and oregano flavor. So this is just vegetables that we're eating now. <laughs> olives are fruit. I actually, uh-huh. did. Oh, yes, I, I, I had to look into that for my intro. All right. <laughs> okay, so I just want to point out the top of the back of the package, which says, Big Juicy Olive seasons with a little cheeky chili, garlic, and oregano, dash, wowzer, exclamation <laughs> point. So whoever wrote that, if you are listening to this podcast, please send me your address so I can come to your house and just beat the shit out of you, because that just annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's a nice actual change from the hipster olive thing. It's kind of like it's a little the opposite way. There's like, I guess I'll even out by just saying I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> one guy defending it, one guy wants to do, whoever it is that wrote this, don't worry, Chad couldn't beat you up probably. That's correct. <laughs> I couldn't beat up this bag of olives if it was sentient. So now so, do you guys <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, probably the same question about just the straight up olives, right? Yeah. How do you feel about olives in general? I love black olives. I love. I could eat black olives all day. It's one of my four staples that I put on a pizza if I have my druthers. And I didn't like green olives originally. And then we've referenced before that we've worked at Lone Star. I bartended there for a while and I would get hungry. So I would eat the green olives <laughs> that were in the jar and I started liking them then. Wow. By the way, if Lone Star is listening... Sorry about that. Actually, the restaurant closed down, so don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. Probably because they spent so much on green <laughs> olives. <laughs> you put them out of business with your olive habit. <laughs> narf, narf, narf. Yeah, uh, so I like, I, I'm a big fan of olives in, in summary. Chad? I think olives are disgusting. They're, yeah, they're just, it's not a pleasant eating experience. My wife really likes them, actually, and she's had these before. I have not. She's a fan of these. There's on the on the front it lists olives, chili, and oregano. I like one of those three things. And even the oregano I'm kind of indifferent to, like whatever. So this is it's not like I'm gonna sit there and just pop oregano into my mouth. So this is uh yeah, we'll see. What do you think about olives, Novak? Not an olive fan. I can eat them. You know, if they're on a pizza, I'll just eat through it. But not a big fan, and I'm actually hoping – I see the chili and oregano and think, well, maybe they can save the olive flavor and sort of make me forget that I'm eating an olive if it's strong enough. Oh, God, the smell. Oh, God. So oh, you guys, I haven't opened it yet. This is – to describe the package, I think, it's it's got a cold feel to the package. Like, the outside's cold even before you open it, and this is has, as it's been just sitting, you know, at room temperature for a couple weeks here, and then it tells you – to refrigerate after you open it. And I think it says something about it can stay for a few days or something like that. Uh, so um, this thing has a hard road to hoe with both of you, it sounds like, just off the bat. Yes. Do be careful. On the back, it says may, may contain stones or pits, which olives normally do, but just be careful. There might be a pit in there. I'm allergic to stones and pits. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Armpits? <laughs> <laughs> That's, wait, why does it say may contain stones, pits, but just next to that, it says no stones? In, like, the text inside the heart. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> These are great. Low in calories, no stones. Uh, spoiler alert, may contain stones. The ingredient is pitted green olives. So maybe they're just putting, maybe they, like, legally have to put that because yeah. sometimes a stone <laughs> might get into the bag or something. The third ingredient is stones. <laughs> Wait, so they're all green olives? Because the package sort of yes. made me imply that there might be 
black ones. Uh, see on no, the back. No, I, I see. A, I see a black one in mine. It's mostly oh, really? green, but there is a black one oh, in there. I hope I get a black one. It looks like one black one out of all the green ones. All right, are we going for it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm ready. Try green first. Oh shit. Oh. Chad loves them, guys. Oh god. <laughs> oh. Oh. <You> got- <laughs> Hey guys, let me know how that chili oregano olive and Mountain oh. Dew ice cocktail that you're swilling up right now. <laughs> I'm having trouble even swallowing this. <laughs> what the hell? Oh fuck! You guys are acting like you ate a bunch of vomit. Oh, <laughs> oh and then it's like kind of spicy. Oh. So real quickly, while these guys are puking in their mouths, <laughs> um, we didn't. Oh. I don't know if we did. We go over the rating schedule or Oops. rating scale. Oh, <laughs> so real we quickly, again. We already did it once, so if, if you were super confused that first time around, let me break it down <laughs> for you. If we love something, we're going to give it a love dat. If we just we don't love it, it's not the best thing in the world, but we like it, fine. Yeah. Guess what? We're going to say like that. <laughs> if it's an olive, we're going to throw up in a bag and give it an olive dat. No, the um, fucking olives. Uh, <laughs> if we uh, could take or leave it, it's fine. Like Not bad, not great. We'll give it a indifferent to that. If we dislike oh. it, <laughs> if we dislike it, we will give it a dislike that. I can already predict you're about to hear a few of the hate dats, which is oh. what we the things oh. we really don't like. And if you're giving birth, <laughs> give it a whatever the fuck you guys are doing right now. So that's the rating scale. Just bring all of our listeners up to speed. All right, let's not uh, let's not split hairs here. Let's get right down to it. These are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> not only am I not going to eat another one of these, I don't even want to be near them. I don't want to think about having a- eaten them. And it actually couldn't even easily have been washed down. It took me a while just to wash them down. And you're showing Geiger showing me the empty bag. Uh, <laughs> I ate them. I guess I don't. You know what? I think if you really like olives that you could like it either way. But even so, I feel like the chili and oregano might throw off even some olive fans. But given that I don't even like olives to begin with, the chili and oregano, not only could it not save it, but it actually made it even worse. So I am, I mean, there's no way I can go anything but hate that. Oh. It. So oh. I'm sorry, man, but I, I hate that. Chad, let's get yours out of the way here too before we <laughs> <laughs> That's a level below hate dad. <laughs> I'm giving these a hate dad. <laughs> I don't think I really need to elaborate. These things are fucking disgusting. <laughs> Go ahead, Geiger. <laughs> All right, so that's two guttural growls and a. I like olives. I'll say. Here's the only real analysis you'll get on that snack because all we heard was groaning and complaining. No, I'm kidding. I like olives. I could not tell you if there was one shred of oregano in here because the chili completely wipes that out. I also didn't get any black olives, which I'm a little bummed about. I like, I mean, I like them because I like olives. I thought it was tasty. Now, if I was reaching for a snack again, would I grab a packet of wet, smashed up olives? <laughs> Maybe not. But I thought it was taste. It tasted good. <laughs> I, I know you're going to kill me for this. It's got to like that for me. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, so we got healthy, good for you food that had contained no pits. We've got two hates and a like. So we're kind of <laughs> pretty far split here, but the hates are going to drag this rating down, and that keeps the coconut chips still in the lead. And uh, what would you say about that? Oh, <laughs> no. oh. dang! Oh, dang. To the coconut Oops, chips. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Dang! Tell I'll just fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get to our final rating, we're going to get to our segment. We always do two ratings and a segment now. That's what we're trying to do. So, Chad, you're our man for the segment. All right. So we're returning to a previous segment we had, You Asked At, where we read listener emails. This email comes to us from Lucy Wormeister out of Champaign, Illinois. So here's what she had to say. Howdy, boys. I've been listening since episode one, but I've never written in until now. You've made some jokes about spitting out food because of it being so gross. It made me wonder if you had any stories about actually getting sick from food. Any good food poisoning stories? Thanks, and keeps the laughs coming. 
Uh, thanks for your email, Lucy. Oh, that's a timely question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, uh, have you ever had a... <laughs> <laughs> this, I got a story about one time I had some olives on a food podcast I was doing. <laughs> So this is a, about actually getting some kind of sick from being from eating food, right? Yeah. I one time ate, man, I forget the name of the sandwich place now, but I had a hot sandwich that had ham and tomatoes on it. I got so sick after that that to this day I still don't eat hot sandwiches. I <laughs> I don't want to eat a sub I like only cold sandwiches now and there was bacon on it too and I actually didn't eat bacon for about 6 months. So, I mean, to almost ruin bacon for me, that's, that's is this bad. Is also but... why you don't like toasted bagels? Because bagels are kind of like bagel sandwiches or whatever. Maybe there's something in there. Yeah, there's something lingering. But it was about as sick as I'd ever been in my life. And it may have had absolutely nothing to do with that. I don't know. But it the, the timing of, of eating that kind of ruined things for me. So, how about your depressing stories, guys? <laughs> was that recent? Or is that like... No, like that, that was probably 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Tell me how sick you get. Come on. <laughs> You puke that? <laughs> uh, most of most of my food poisoning stories happen when we're traveling, because you know when you travel, you like eat, you'll just eat whatever, like street food or whatever. This is there's someone where you're on a mountain taking a dump in a hole or something like that. <laughs> that happened also. It's not what I was about to tell, but that's a good one too. Did you plug up a volcano by shitting into the top? <laughs> All right, so okay, so I'd forgotten about that one. So I'll I'll do so I have 3, I'll just bang them out real quick. So the first one, we were in Ethiopia. This was actually on our honeymoon and uh there was something near the end of the trip. I was just getting super sick from eating all the Ethiopian food, which was delicious, but like I just I got some weird food poisoning. So then we had a layover in Egypt on the way back and we were just walking around Cairo and I was like I feel so sick. It, we went into this the store souvenir shop and i was like do you have a bathroom and they're like sure back there it was like a shop that was in somebody's house almost or something so well i had to go through their kitchen to get to the thing and i'm just in there on the toilet just just puking for 40 minutes and janet said you could hear it through the entire store and the shopkeeper was like is is he okay and janet was just like oh he'll be fine <laughs> and then, um and i was fine but uh probably made for a bad shopping experience so that was the first one that was very detailed that <laughs> <laughs> i think my food poisoning story is listening to your food poisoning story <laughs> start puking now. puke sounds and everything yeah <laughs> All right, next. Next one. Next one was the one you mentioned where we were, yeah, we were hiking in Bhutan in the mountains and we ate some mushroom dish. They had gone and picked some mushrooms from like out in the field or whatever. And they tasted good at the time, but then the next day we were just so sick trying to hike. And then that night we were up in the mountains and it was freezing cold. And I just woke up in the middle of the night and I was just like, oh, I'm going to be so sick. And there was a little tent outhouse, like, on the other side of the field. So I had to just struggle to, like, put my sh- my shoes on and, like, hobbled across to, in the freezing cold to this thing. And I just remember just having, like, the worst diarrhea and then finishing and then immediately having to turn around and puke into that same hole. And then as soon as I finished puking, immediately turning and having diarrhea again. <laughs> so what, what, the the fuck? what were the sound effects of those three actions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try to recreate that one. We just lost every listener. <laughs> Anyone still listening after that? Asking about this? <laughs> Third one. We were in Madagascar, and we you, were... You better have... This is following the other two. There better be so much diarrhea on this story. <laughs> <laughs> you drowned every meerkat in Madagascar with you. <laughs> Liquid shit. We did, we 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 went and got um, some street food the night before, and we were in this town, this small town. And our driver that was driving us around had told us like, "Oh, there's no real good restaurants in this town. You should just eat at the hotel restaurant." But we didn't want to do that. We really wanted to go out into the town and explore. So we went out. We found some street food. We ate it. There was one thing that we bought from some guy, and as soon as we both put it in our mouth, we just knew that it was bad. And so we just, like, spit it out immediately. But then I was up that entire night, like, a couple times, just, like, puking. And then the next morning, we were Just from having it in your mouth and spitting it out? Yeah, I, like, must have swallowed something. 
<laughs> and so then the, we we were supposed to go see some lemurs at like a lemur park the next day. <laughs> and so the driver's driving us to the lemur park and I'm sitting in the back like just feeling queasy, but I can't tell him anything because I don't want him to be right that we should have eaten at the hotel restaurant. So I'm just, he can tell that I'm kind of like, he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And so then we're maybe 50 yards away from the entrance to the lemur place. And I'm just like, pull over. And so he pulls the thing over and I hop out of the car. And um, my wife said, like, as I was running towards the ditch, she just saw like from the side view, this just huge cone of puke just flying out of my mouth onto the side of the road. And then the driver was like, was like, we can turn around. And I'm like, no, we're seeing the lemurs. And so then after that, I was fine. He didn't take a chance to give you an I told you so? No, I told him, I, I made up some excuse like, oh, I just like, you know, I'm feeling motion sick or something <laughs> like that. Like I, did, I refused to admit that it was from the food. And he's like, you let that street food touch your lips. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there you go. All right. Gagger? All right. <laughs> <laughs> following that uh yeah how much space is left for this box you got four stories i bet <laughs> right all right did i ever tell you a time where i ate my own shit and then shit it out again <laughs> um Jesus. no all of mine i can't remember throwing up from food poisoning mine have all been about violently shitting myself so i have a lactose problem <laughs> i'm lactose intolerant and if you weren't ready to leave the podcast, buckle up. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> Just wait. What <laughs> my drippy shit? <laughs> Maybe this was a bad email to pick. <laughs> Thanks for the email. Dripper <laughs> Snippler, or whatever your name is. We. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what the story is. <laughs> together i mean there's like a couple times you and i were you driving me home we had gone to like the avalon or something it's just like a local ice cream parlor yeah you the okay. you were the one that we had to pull over at the oasis right oh my God. there was 10 minutes <laughs> I I was gonna shoot myself in your car and i was raising my seat up off the bench of the car and holding my ass together and then we got to this like oasis which is like this it's like a overpass on the, the highway overpass. They have a bunch of restaurants. It is the dirtiest home of transients you've ever seen. And it's the last place you want to pull your pants down in. But I raced in there like it was a, the, a, a true oasis in the desert. And I unleashed the dogs in that bathroom so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. But uh, I mean, when I was little, we didn't know I had lactose intolerance. I got diagnosed in sixth grade. So we used to go out to dinner every Saturday night. And afterward, we'd go to Dairy Queen sometimes. And I was in a Dairy Queen just smoking the fuck out of that place in the bathroom so bad that I don't know why my dad told me this. It didn't really help my self-esteem. But we were driving home. He's like, yeah, uh, were you having problems with the bathroom? I'm like, why? And he goes, because the whole place smelled real bad. <laughs> he goes, oh, jeez. Some little kid came in with his dad, and the kid said, Daddy, this smells like poop in here. And they just left. I was like, yeah. <laughs> left the restaurant? Hey, Dad, I'm also a little kid. Thanks for making me feel like shit. <laughs> but yeah, other than it, most of my bad stories like that are just me trying to beat the clock before I shit myself. That's a bad story about your dad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then he forced yeah, me to drink. Thanks a lot for making me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, shut up and eat this stick of butter. Oh. <laughs> now you're going to uh -huh. be my sideshow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anybody that tuned out for that, you can now <laughs> tune back in. We'll get back to the regular show. Thanks for your question, Lucy. If you have a question, uh, email us, youtrydat at gmail.com. There has to be some kind of asterisk on this episode saying, <laughs> do not <laughs> listen. Yeah. Fast forward. Do not listen. That's the answer. Just don't listen. That's just going to be the episode description. Don't listen to this episode. Move on to the next one. <laughs> hey, are you hungry? Are you welcoming to a snack podcast? Get you all riled up? Now listen to... 20 minutes of Chad barfing in Madagascar. Well, nothing, uh, now that we talk about questionable food making us sick, I'm ready to eat this clearance bin smashed up <laughs> Hershey bar. <laughs> so, have you ever paid full price for a snack on this show, or is it all meant 
<laughs> work. I paid full price for the deep river chips. Uh, Everything else I've sent you has either been clearance bin or stolen from work. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is a Hershey bar that says flavor of New York cherry cheesecake. Now, this is the second sort of non-traditional Hershey bar now we've tried because we tried that Hershey's Gold, which we universally disliked, I think, or some of us even hated it. This is a Hershey bar, but it's uh, it looks like it's white chocolate because it's the cherry cheesecake. So it doesn't it's not regular chocolate. It's a very white bar with like pink spots in it that I guess maybe are cherry bits or something. How do you guys feel about cheesecake straight? Well, I really enjoy it, but if you listen to the last segment, I try to report it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, For okay. those that didn't listen, recap, please. <laughs> 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 When did you, when's the time you shit your pants most from cheesecake? That's what I was really asking. <laughs> yeah. So the cheesecake factory turns into the shitting my pants factory real quick now. Um, <laughs> that, that didn't even follow. It makes no sense. These smell really sweet. I like cheesecake. Chad, you seemed indifferent to cheesecake. It's like all right. Yeah, I usually it's usually too sweet or too heavy. I'll eat Oreo cheesecake, of course, because I'm predictable as hell. But other than that, I usually pass on cheesecake. And you like, I like cheesecake too. quite a bit. Yeah, like just the, the original. The back of this bar looks like acne. Like it has, yeah, it has like herpes or something. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> appealing. It does sort of look like a, a slide of like an STD or something. Like it's just not. If you guys have herpes that look like this, go to the doctor. These are giant <laughs> bumps, aren't they? I guess I don't really know what herpes looks like. But... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the bump the bumps are like cookie bits. They're they're cookie oh, bits. Oh, it smells really strongly a cherry though, kind of or like yeah. candy cherry. Dig it in. It's very sweet. Um, do you guys like white chocolate? No, not usually. I don't mind it. I don't get it how it's chocolate. It doesn't taste. I mean, I know there's like cacao in it or whatever, but I just don't think it tastes like chocolate. Yeah, well, it's white chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all. <laughs> I don't get how it's chocolate. It is. <laughs> it's sort of like just like a raisin. Well, it's an olive, so. We talked about last episode when we ate a cherry bar. How none of us really liked cherry as a flavor that much. I don't. I mean, I like cheesecake, and nothing about this says cheesecake to me at all. I don't understand why it's called cheesecake. I gotta be honest. I ate two little segments of the Hershey bar, and I have zero interest in proceeding. Mm-hmm. Same. Uh oh. Yeah. This is uh this is a really downer of an episode here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean dang. We ate three snacks that probably none of us really liked all that much, except Geiger likes everything. And then we made all our listeners sick to their stomach. <laughs> <laughs> so we've officially this is a this is probably our last episode <laughs> yes, i don't know we got it all out of the way at least <laughs> all right geiger yeah you had to wait for all of us to share our shit stories so <laughs> we're gonna let you go first this is a big nope for me i don't like white chocolate at all i'm with you novak in that it uh, i don't understand what makes this cheesecakey i guess the white chocolate is probably what makes it it's more like a supposed to represent like the cream of the cheese but it does not taste like that the cookie bits i don't really get like what part of a, i guess there's like a graham cracker crust on a cheesecake but i don't know this is overpoweringly sweet i don't like it in fact i dislike that rather strongly i won't say hate that but I really don't want to eat anymore. I, I really thought you were going to go, hey, you know, I was looking at the stats, and you have never given a hate yet. I thought this was going to be the first. Boy, I'm tempted to retroactively hate the handy snacks. Those are bad, the handy snacks. But I, I'll stand by it. I'll stand by it. These are, I just, I mean, it's close to a hate for me. I, but I, it's just hard for me to say, like, this is so bad, I can't possibly eat it. I just ate two pieces. It couldn't have been that bad. I just don't like it that much. So dislike that. There's a dislike. I'll head up next. I the first couple of bites I didn't mind it a lot because I actually kind of like white chocolate, but I couldn't get through much more. And it, something about the flavor was very off off putting. It tastes nothing like cheesecake. I don't know who the hell eats this. Like who has a choice between getting this bar and getting just a Hershey bar and would possibly ever pick this thing? It's so sweet and overwhelming. But I don't think it's as bad as the olives, for example. And I do like the white chocolate part of it. 
but that's not going to keep it out of a double dislike debt. So it's two dislikes. Chad, are you going to make it a unwelcome visitor? I can't. This thing is a fucking disaster Ooh. from start to finish. It's too sweet. The white chocolate sucks. I don't like the little cookie bits because of the cherry flavoring. I mean, if they were like a, they have a similar, which is like a cookies and cream bar where the cookie bits are like Oreo bits. That's not great either, but it's better than this. I want nothing to do with this bar. I hate that. This bar sucks. <laughs> olives are worse. The olives are worse. I'm not making groaning noises, but I am going to give this thing a hate that. It's not good. Chad's only, the only way to get a good score on a candy bar is if you are an Oreo for Chad. It, <laughs> Oreos need to be in everything for Chad. Or Snickers. <laughs> I like Snickers. That's true. That's right. Wow. So, Chad, so I have never hated something, but I feel like you've hated several things. Am I wrong? Or I gave out two in this episode. Right. But, like, do you have the... Those, I have that, the stats, that? though. I, yeah, so those are my third and fourth hates lifetime. Oof. Wow. I think you also hate intolerance, right? <laughs> <laughs> just, pick, just pick something for you to hate. I actually kind of hate shit stories. Like, I don't like hearing them. <laughs> and this episode was full of them. So would you say when it comes to our podcast, you hate that? <laughs> we have friends who love telling their shit stories. And, yeah, that's uh, true. <laughs> so... Th- Oddly enough, the, these coconut chips are yes. the winner by default, <laughs> and it's only one thing you could say about that, fellas. Dang! <laughs> Dang. <laughs> like, what? So is it solely because I liked them, this thing? Because you guys both had a dislike, right? Right, but we, there's also, there, this is the only thing that didn't get a hate from somebody, because we <laughs> both hated the olives, so the average is, which is still below average, is going to bring it up as the winner. And that's actually kind of rare. I was, almost every episode, we had something that a bunch of us liked. So. so Mama Dang owes me for pulling this all the way up to the top. So we're going to recommend, actually, that this week, our listeners eat, I don't know, a piece of fruit or a vegetable or something, <laughs> because we can't recommend any of these. So power <laughs> through for this week. And <clears throat> keep sending those emails. And speaking of emails... Geiger, let us know where they should send their shit questions to. <laughs> you can send your disgusting, sloppy shit stories to youtrydat at gmail.com. You can post pictures of shit on our Facebook. Please don't do that. I was kidding. At you tried dat. You can hit us up on Twitter at you tried dat. Seriously, you sick fucks. If you send us any shit material, we're throwing it away. So don't do that. <laughs> But uh, do listen, sub, uh, subscribe to the podcast, let us know what you think, leave reviews, feel free to suggest new snacks. Don't review this episode. Don't review this episode. Don't eat any of the things we ate here or any of the things that made us have violent reactions. <laughs> stay away from street food in Madagascar. Don't. <laughs> There's a lot of stay aways this week. We would love to hear what you think about the podcast. Thanks for listening as always. All right, boys. We'll see you. We we're gonna have we made it to double digit episodes. Woo-hoo-hoo. Episode ten will be coming up next time. We just need double digit subscribers. <laughs> 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 All right. We will be back next episode with three new snacks, and we'll see you next time, boys. Deuces. Yep. Yeah.